Hello drivers, I'm Victor. And I'm Nate. We're going to walk you through the ELD basics. That's right. And after watching this video, you're going to know the basics of using an electronic logging device, or ELD, its technical specifications, and what you and your carrier are responsible for when it comes to ELDs. You'll be able to talk about which drivers are required to use an ELD, describe the basic system and device requirements, explain how you will comply with records management and roadside inspections. Finally, review the rule provisions for carriers in regards to supporting documents and harassment prevention. Let's get started by talking about the ELD mandate. Thanks, Vic. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, or FMCSA, published the Electronic Logging Device and Supporting Documents Final Rule. You've probably heard it called the E-Log Rule or the ELD mandate. Basically, it requires almost all drivers who fill out logs to switch over to an ELD. That's right. Tell us exactly what an ELD does, Nate. Sure. An ELD gets information from your vehicle engine to automatically record your driving hours and duty status. Now, the good thing about this is it improves your compliance with the hours of service rules and makes it easier for you to keep your records. The first thing you should know about EOD use is the FMCSA compliance provision. Right. As we said earlier, the deadline to comply with the E-Log rule is December 18th, 2017. But there is a grandfathering provision you should know about. If you use a compliant automatic onboard recording device, or AOBRD, you could continue to use it until December 16, 2019. By that time, you either have to have it updated to meet the EOD standards or replace it. And here's something else you should know. Only devices on the FMCSA's list of registered ELDs can be installed and used after the compliance deadline. They're the official replacement for any AOBRD being used. Going forward, it will be very important that you know what type of system you are buying and if it can be updated to meet the ELD system requirements. Let's move on to the technical aspects of using ELDs. Sure, I can start. First, all users need to have an account and user ID in your company's electronic logging system. This means drivers, supervisors, and any support staff, including mechanics that need to test drive vehicles or take them to outside vendor shops. And one reason for this is to track entries and changes made in the system. For example, if you're a dispatcher who drives on the weekend and a supervisor, you'll have two separate accounts. One is a driver, and one is a supervisor who can propose edits for other drivers. And there are also in-cab requirements. Your portable ELD needs to be mounted in your vehicle and in your view while you're in the driver's seat. While the device must not allow entries to be made while the vehicle is in motion, you need to be able to see a malfunction indicator while driving so you know if the ELD is not operating correctly. Here's a list of things you'll need to have whenever you're operating your vehicle. Records for the current day and the previous seven days, either as a printout or saved in your ELD via display that can be viewed without an enforcement officer needing to enter the cab. A user's manual and an instruction sheet on data transfer during roadside inspections. Additionally, you'll need to have an instruction sheet detailing malfunctions and how to fix them. And finally, at least an eight day supply of blank paper logs to be used in case your device fails. When it comes to ELDs, your carrier has a number of responsibilities. Right. Let's start with supporting documents. First of all, a supporting document is generally defined as a document that is generated or received by a carrier that can be used to verify the accuracy of a driver's record of duty status. There are five categories of supporting documents that your carrier needs to keep and have available during an audit, including shipment paperwork, like bills of lading, shipment invoices, and delivery receipts, dispatch and trip records, or the equivalent document, expense receipts related to any on-duty, non-driving time, like fuel receipts and lumper receipts, electronic mobile communication or tracking system records, and payroll and settlement records, or a comparable document that indicates payment to the driver. And there's more. It also needs to include certain things like the driver, location, date, and time. The regs require that your carrier keep up to a maximum of eight supporting documents for each 24-hour period. If less than eight documents are available, a document without a timestamp can still be considered a supporting document. And get this, all records from your company's communication or tracking system for the 24-hour period only count as one document 
and toll receipts or billing statements also don't count toward the eight supporting document max. Before we move on, you should know that using supporting documents that can be tied to on-duty time, like pickup and delivery receipts, fuel receipts, and roadside inspection and crash reports make it easier on you if you were to be audited. With these supporting documents, it's just a matter of checking that the on-duty time or the flag indicating a short change in duty status is at the right time. As Nate mentioned earlier, ELDs are connected directly to your vehicle's engine, recording driving hours and duty status automatically, which in turn improves your compliance with the hours of service rules. All ELDs work pretty much the same and have the same goal, to make it easy for you to accurately track your hours in real time. This not only helps keep you in compliance, it helps keep you safe. 